What's going on, y'all? Uh, first thing first, uh, two quick uh, prayers uh, for the uh, victims of the tragic bombings in Boston and in um, West Texas, the town of West Texas. Um, it's a terrible, tragic event, and um, pray for all the families that were affected by that, um, especially for the Boston bombings. It was a pretty major terrorist attack. Um, also pray for ACP Carter on his uh, surgery. Hope everything went well today. Um, but anyway, back uh, back to what I want to do. First off, I want to shout out uh, 49 cents. Awesome, gave that little shout out out. We're going to be doing this, and uh, I'm going to talk about tight ends today for the NFL draft. Um, got my notebook out. Uh, anyway. Um, First thing, uh, this is actually a pretty decent, uh, talented tight end draft. Now, uh, people are going to get mad because I'm going to say a few people aren't fit 49ers. But understand, uh, the second tight end is more of a blocking tight end that could come out of a blocking, you know, from the three-point stance out and do a, you know, uh, do a cut and, do, and can catch from being the backfield. So I want a guy that's more of a blocker that can catch more than – a, just a pass catching tight end because we've got one of those already. His name's Vernon Davis and he's pretty good. Anyway, okay, so start off uh, probably the number one tight end in the draft, Tyler Efer. I actually don't think he's a good fit for the 49ers uh, based on that he's a pass catching tight end. Now, um, would I hate that he'd be on the team? No, but uh, I don't believe he's a good fit for the system. Um, he's 6'6", 250 by Walter Football Standards. Um, great player. Don't get me wrong. Awesome player. Can catch the ball. You know, no problems. But um, I just don't I just don't like, I, I don't think he's a good fit. Zach Ertz out of Stanford, 6'5", 249. Um, I think is a great fit for the 49ers if they want to go that route. Now, I know Harbaugh has experience with the guy. Um, he's going to be a high round draft. He's going to be first or second round. Um, is that where the 49ers are going to go? I don't think so. Um, now they do have two picks in the second round, so who really knows what's going to go on? However, uh, this guy probably would be one of the better fits. Uh, there's going to be a few guys also that are a little bit lower rounds that are going to be awesome fits also, but this guy is one of the first big fits. Um... Now we got Gavin Escobar out of San Diego State, um, another more of a pass catching tight end than a blocker. Uh, I was watching some of the film on him, and he's he's not a very big blocker. He doesn't like he's he's pretty much just push the guy around, you know, use the two hands, push the guy, kind of hold him up. Not really a guy that blocks that can go lay out somebody. Uh, but he's six six and he's two fifty four. He's a big guy. He's enormous. Um, so he makes a very big target that, I mean, somebody's going to be really happy with him because he's a really good football player. Uh, next guy, Jordan Reed out of Florida, 6'3", 236. Um, he's one of the more interesting talents coming out of this draft at tight end because he's very athletic. Um, and he's very good. Um, he gets open, he, he blocks, he does everything. But he has trouble securing the football last year that were big, been big issues. Um, now, I, I don't know if I should be blaming him or blaming Driscoll for, you know, not being able to give him a good pass. But I don't think he had a, as productive year as he could have with a better quarterback under the system. But he did block. He blocked extremely well for in the SEC, helping Gillisley run all over places. Um, here's and here are the next three that I would absolutely love for Niners to get in the later rounds. Uh, first guy, Travis Kelsey out of Cincy, 6'5", 255. Um, now knowing how good Coach Jones is as a football coach, I am absolutely. I, I think this guy is going to be a home run late round draft pick. Uh, this guy is big. He's fast. He catches the football. He does everything. He's what you think of a tight end. He's the prototypical tight end. He comes out of a stance. He'll hit somebody in the in the mouth and then go out and catch a football. He was a he was a do everything guy for Cincinnati last season. And from seeing how Coach Jones is coaching down here in Tennessee, he's been coached amazingly. 
uh, by some of the best coaches in the country. Um, the next guy, Michael Rivera. Of course, I'm going to homer. Homer out for UT. Go Vols, screw y'alls. Um, 6'3", 242. Um, was very productive uh, this season for Tennessee. Um, which, you know, and Tyler Bray had to s spread the ball around. Sometimes he'd go missing for a few games. Um, I don't know if that was just because of injuries or they were focusing on him a lot. And I think it was more that defenses were focusing on him because of they knew, you know, maybe Bray doesn't know Cordell Patterson very well. You know, and Cordell doesn't run good good routes. Justin Hunter's kind of taking it easy this season. So what's the biggest, what's the biggest threat? And that was Michael Rivera. And then the last guy... I don't think anybody's been talking about him, which is absolutely insane because he's one of the better tight ends I saw last year in football, even though he had a down year. And that was Phil, Phil Litzerkirchen out of Al Auburn. 6'3", uh, 258. Um, had, his best season was the season where he was with Cam Newton. And Cam, uh, that was Cam's safety valve. That was his buddy. Uh, you know, when in doubt... You know, he had tossed to him, and he knew that when, when Cam would throw it to him, let, uh, you know, Let's Creature was going to catch him, was going to catch it. And, I mean, he had some big catches in big games. And I don't understand it. I don't understand why people are down on this guy. I know he has some injury issues, but somebody's going to pick him up either seventh round, sixth round, or undrafted, and he could be a stud in the NFL. He could be like Arian Foster was, and he had a bad senior season, but he had amazing other seasons. I don't understand it. Um, but uh, that's one of the other guys I think that should be noticed in this uh, upcoming draft. Um, and with everything going on. Um, I understand, you know, right now, nobody's really wanting to be talking about the draft uh, because of everything going on. And uh, once again, uh, anybody who's been living in the Boston area who was affected with the Boston Marathon... Uh, my hearts and prayers are going out for you guys. Um, you know, hearing the stories about, you know, there's people being amputated and everything. Um, it's it's tough, you know. And and the people that came and ran towards that bomb blast, those guys are heroes. Um, I know a lot. I heard a lot of military members were were up there, which is naturally for the Boston Marathon. And uh, all of them, uh, there was guys who were doing the marathon in full ruck, which um, I've never done a full ruck. Now I've done a uh, I've done a a, a march, at basic training in the Air Force. I understand it's Air Force, you know, ha 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 ha. You know, we're 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 known as the uh, you know children's camp, but um, it's it's tough to do a ruck, uh, any miles, let alone do do 26. And then when an attack happens, they went right towards them and started saving lives. And uh, you know. That makes me proud to be to be you know in service with those guys. Um, whoever did this bomb blast, we're we're gonna get them, and we're gonna make them pay. Uh, the the idiot who sent Ryson to the Senators, um, you know you're 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 a real smart guy. He's been caught. Uh, the bomb blast and uh, the the fertilizer uh, explosion. It, it looked like a bomb. I mean I know it wasn't because it was fertilizer, but it was big and. Uh, all the people who have been affected with that, uh, uh, my heartfelt prayers go to you guys. Anyway, this is JL103 signing out. Thanks, everybody. Peace.